Hi everybody, welcome to episode 71 of Music Real Talk with Marvin. How are you, Danny? Pretty good, I wanted to surprise you with uh, the information about tonight's gig, but I couldn't because you looked at the email. What, what information? <laughs> PayPal. Oh, dude. We barely got paid today. Well, it was a weird, weird situation. We had a few weird situations with two. Um, we were playing New Mexico today. We're in truth or consequences, New Mexico. And the only reason why I booked the show, like, the show is nice, but it really didn't pay enough money to book it, like, not even close. But I booked it because last time we had uh, hotel rooms and... That had hot springs. That had hot springs in them. Everybody knows Marvin likes a good soaky. And hotel rooms light with two beds. And I wrote the lady, the booking agent for the venue, I wrote her that I'll do it. Uh, uh, I'll do it, even though it's not enough money. I'll do it if you get us... Uh, Rooms. It'll be a good, a good break in the tour. Room, I told her if you get a room like uh, like last time. I told her I got a room like last time. And a few hundred dollars and then we'll make it work. I'll make it work. I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. It's going to be a nice break for us. Yeah. And then she got us rooms that are not like last time. Yeah. We only have one bed. And... No hot springs. And no hot springs. And I was like, in what way are both like last time? <laughs> like they have, they have walls. walls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I specifically said like last well, time. The, the thing that was crazy is this, in the small potato economy, which uh, a lot of these venues are participating in. Yeah, that was just the intro to what's going oh, okay. on. But when we came here, and a couple, before our last song, I got a, an email from a venue, and I saw it pop on my phone, so I had to look. And they sent us the money on PayPal, but they put the fee on us. Yeah. So they paid us 10 bucks less than we were supposed to pay us. Yeah, the processing PayPal fee. You can send it like, to other dude, yeah. couldn't you give us a fucking check? <laughs> and if you're repaying PayPal, why won't you take that fucking 10 bucks on you? Yeah. It's, it's not like, that it's it matters. So it's petty. Just it's just so petty. Everybody's like that now. It's, it's and, and we had a bunch of issues. We really had a bunch of issues this fucking tour, dude. We played in LA. It was LA was a LA show. was the worst show uh, that we've played in like seven years. I thought the music was good. Yeah, the music was great. But yeah, I was apparently very loud. I tried to do a new cab and yeah, didn't really work. But um, it's it's so weird. Like the small markets are now the big markets, and the big markets are the small markets. It's they, yeah, they're making yeah, it impossible. Like you know, I get it. Like if you're in, if if you live in LA, and you, let's say you're like the, one of the seven guys who's like not vaccinated, you're certainly not coming out of the fear that they might check the passport. Well, but we had a bunch of sh- markets that I thought that uh, we did smaller rooms with like a hundred cap, and I was like, dude, we're gonna set out for sure. We haven't been out for like yeah, years, and it's yeah. like, dude, we. we we were, like, our numbers, usually I would think, like, we have a good chance to sell them out. And, like, I was like, dude, how can we not bring 100 people, like, in fucking Denver? Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And, or LA. Right. LA, I was like, dude, we can definitely bring 100 people in LA. It's like, no. Not even fucking close. And well, I mean, it's they make it so hard for people to have a good time. You know what I mean? It's like, from Oh, I, but yeah, I'm, we've I'm seen people take va- vaccine cards for the first time. Yeah, I've never seen that before. They asked me for one to... Me too. Yeah. It, 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 I I know from Chicago, like that, just the uncertainty of what I need to bring and how they're gonna be like with masks will make me like not even want to. It's also really fucking awkward now. Yeah, for people they don't know how to behave. It's not fun. So, well, the small cities are awesome, like Yuma and stuff. Like nobody even thought about wearing a mask. No, we like, did. The there people like, were like, there, did. there were like two people. That, yeah, yeah, in the audience we didn't really. Not even everybody that walked well, I think. It's just, ugh, it's fucking nasty. I'm right. just done. I had COVID already. I'm done. Yeah. Um, can I tell about the lay? Sure. So we came there. Right, I booked the show. And we we get there on the time we were supposed to get there. And there is a background on stage. Um, Everett doesn't like playing other people's drums. Right. Especially He's very good about showing his drums. Yeah, but especially you don't want to play like a beat up. Yeah, they have shit gear. And like, they also have shit gear. Yeah. Well. It's always like the same shit, like a, a Fender, like a Fender, like the Ville. Uh, they have like a Marshall cab. 
like a shitty like and that's a boogie always too yeah it's awesome. yeah and like a shitty bass cap like an EBS or something yeah. and then, or something like that and then like like the shittiest kit yeah and we like to play our own stuff but uh, so I talked to the bartender didn't even know we were playing right which is like how the fuck do you not know we're playing? Like, tickets are 20 bucks, we've been selling tickets. Right. It's not like, oh, we got to a coffee shop and McDonald's and there's a show. It's like, right. you're a fucking idiot. And yet, there's, it's, it's like they're set up for music, they're like a stage. Yeah, so... Like, but usually it's comedy We night. talked to the manager, we're like, okay, we're gonna take the... What can we do with the gear? We're like, okay, you can strike it, uh, take it off stage, you told us where to put it, so we did that, put our own gear on. We're about ready to sound check, the sound guy got there. He um, was throwing a fit. Yeah, he was upset. He was he pouting was so hard, I was afraid his lips would fall off. Yeah, he was pouty. And he was very upset at us for taking the drums. Why did you take the drums? And, and I, I need your amps to be... He told me... Well, Daniel was trying to, to stop me from telling him anything. He was like, oh, you, got, you guys should point your amps to the wall so I can do the sound for you. Yeah. And I was like, um... No. Yeah, it's a I, I, told him, I told him, listen... Hear us play for right. 20 seconds. We played thousands of yeah. shows. I told him, played, yeah, I told him, we played thousands of shows together. Let, me, let, let us well, play you, for... You, tw- you, were, you were out of your depth in, uh, in name dropping and self-hype because you're in LA. So when you said that, it activated his chakra. It's like, I did sound uh, so, for okay. hundreds of LA bands. Yeah, so that's what happened. So... Uh, <laughs> Um, Usually we don't get the stereotypical sound guy. We do in but, LA, New York, but yeah, just those two markets. It's like you get those you get those sound Idiots. guys that the memes are about. Yeah, this guy. Is so I told him, listen, we played a lot of shows like that. Uh, give us twenty seconds, listen to it, and then if you have issues, we'll, we'll let's figure it out. And he's like, I mixed three thousand shows. I told Danny and uh, I told the guys in the in the van later that it's like somebody. Like you, you give like let's say you give uh, another dude a hand job, and the guy's like, "It's too rough." And it's like, "Dude, I I give I give thousands of hand jobs." It's like, dude, I'm t- I don't care who the fuck like what you mixed other fucking shows. What the fuck do you know about our show? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, "What? Oh shit! You did punk night for the last twenty years. Who gives a shit?" So, and he was really upset and yeah. then he couldn't work out the system yeah he couldn't even couldn't get the, like, the sound system to turn on so I asked him so he gave Danny but he did get to get Danny a mic talk yeah, he, mic. Gave, he plugged a mic into a powered speaker and gave it to me to talk to the audience and then we just did stage volume yeah and I asked him hey can you just tell us if something needs to go up or down and he was like yeah I'll tell you and then but then he didn't he just went outside and pow- was powered the entire night yeah really and radio. Okay, so, <clears throat> him, the door guy, we couldn't take card. I told the door guy, hey, if somebody comes in and they need to pay with card, c- come get me. Yeah, pay, so, I'll twice during the show, he came to stage to get me, and I ran doing the guitar solo to, <laughs> to, the charge, to charge them, right? So, that's the situation. Oh, and also the door guy was obviously about, it's another story, about to... Yeah, that's going to be a lot of me renting today. I feel like about that stuff. <laughs> it, the dog I was about to charge them uh, 10 bucks a ticket. Instead of 20. And I was like, dude. This is another thing that's been happening where people are, like, venues are charged. Like, we keep, we, 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 we charge $20 at the door pretty, pretty much anywhere. But a lot of people just. Decide it, to take it down to 15. Yeah, just without, cons- it's so It happened in a bunch of shows. It's so fucked like, up. Dude, they give you like a 25% pay cut yeah it's like dude it's my money and we're like, oh, it's for him it's like oh it's only five bucks no motherfucker it's five bucks to like per person 50 people 60 people 70 people it's a big fucking difference at the end of the yeah. night it's like dude and and also specifically if you there, get paid minimum wage yeah. why are you making economic decisions yeah for like a business and spe- no even the owner in sacramento well yeah. he's like what the fuck yeah now i, I the owner in Sacramento was like, after, after the fact, was, I just didn't think people would uh, walk in the door. After she told me they have no walk-ins. Yeah. Right? Because she said nobody walks on the street. There's no shit. Nobody wants to get stabbed in the, in the throat <laughs> by a method. But she's like, no, she was like, nobody walks on the street. And I was like, okay, that's fine. But then we had people come in, right? The room was not full, but pretty full. We had like, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 people. And, you know, it was fine. Dude, nobody walks into a fusion show. Exactly, that's what I was saying. There's no such thing. And paying 15 bucks 
It's like, oh, 15 bucks for a fusion show of a band I never heard of? Yeah, for sure. It's like, what, what do they think? That, like, these girls with, like, the mini skirts that walk the streets? Like, is that lady in Dominant? Holy shit. Wait, wait. Oh, right into 15, the altar, 30 15, seconds? let me come in. 20, no. I'm not going to pay 20. It's like, what okay. the fuck? I'm just going to sit by the door and see if he goes harmonic major. So, wait. So, let me finish the LA story, bro. Because let's say, you know, this fi- I'm not right. done with the LA. Right. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, we had a 225 production fever, which means they got the first 225 and we got the rest, which usually would mean we'll make fucking bank in LA because you, you have to bring like 60, 70 people already and you're, just, you're, yeah, you're just, making good money, yeah. and which is nothing. I, I thought, we, I really did think we we're going to sell it out. And he came to me, the manager came to me, which showed up out of nowhere too because he wasn't there the entire night. Yeah. He's like, I understand there's a problem. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. You, you, you tell me what's going on. What's going and I was like, on? what's going on? And he's like, um, well, uh, misunderstanding. I was like, I, I, I seem to understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, well, like, what's the issue? And like, well, you have two hundred twenty-five dollars uh, production fee. And I was like, you have to pay because the sound guy was here, and the sound guy has to be here, and we paid him, and we're paying him. And I was like, yeah, I know. What's what's the deal we made? I have it in the email. It's all good. Like, oh, cool. So you owe me 43 bucks. Motherfucker, how 225 when 20 at the door and owe you 43 bucks, you fucking idiot. <laughs> right? How is that How is that math? Like, you can do it with your fingers. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll pay you 43 bucks. Okay, I made the tickets online. You know, I, I, made, some, I made tickets online and then I made uh, the, the money that I took for people that came in with the card. Fine, fuck it. I don't know why you <laughs> fucked up the dough, but 43 bucks. And then he's like, I, I, he's like, just give me cash. He's like, I'm not going to give you cash, but you can charge my card. And he's like, oh, what do you mean? I don't know if I can do it. I was like, you have a bow. Charge me 43 bucks at the bow. You can, you can take a card. And he's like, oh, okay. I'll just add it to your drink tab. And I said, I didn't have a drink tab. I only drank water. And he's like, well, somebody in your band drank. We have three drinks. And I'm like, uh, well, the, the bartender, bartender told us that she, she had us yeah, some two like, drinks a person. So it shouldn't be an issue. We have eight drinks, three drinks. And I was like, well, she was wrong. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So she her. can pay. Yes, to talk, to, talk to her. It's like, I understand it. I didn't say the chicken pay. I said, well, I understand she was wrong, but... It's not like we paid, f- we, we drank 40 drinks. It's like we, we drank three, like w- two, sure, two sure. cheap beers and, and one well liquor. And he was like, he was thinking like, oof, oof, oof. Like, you know what? On me. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you. Like, he was like, on me. It's like, you know, I take care of musicians. So it's like, <laughs> like, uh, like I'm going I'm to fucking kill you if you do not <laughs> Like, yeah. you fucking idiot. Dude. But that, that really is LA and New York in a nutshell. Like the, it's just so inundated with uh, with gigs and with people playing like an insane amount of uh, you know they, they have a show every every day of the week probably for a long time and these people who are just so jaded on absolutely everything. It's it, it's just the vibe. You know, I that, wish fake it till you make it wasn't a rhyme in English because Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but I don't know, man. It's like the the toll that COVID has uh, has taken on uh, on the big cities now. Because I think the small places are, you know, we're we're not having. I mean, in spite of the same, it's not the same. And but I'm I'm saying in spite of the tone of your rant, we're having a good tour. We're still earning good money, and we're playing. Some of the shows are great, but just the ones, the ones where, you know, where the big markets were, we thought were going to really do well. And it's just, they've made, they've made the situation impossible. And there's just this fatigue. You see people are just are not, there are a lot of people now who I think are never coming out again. You know, it's. Yeah. Some people uh, have had enough of shows, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. It's rough. It's yeah, it fucking sucks, dude. I was, I was just checking that it didn't charge us extra. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking about it. Yeah, because I forgot. I forgot about it. 
<laughs> yeah, no, but two is fine. Johnny speaking and playing new music, and I think the music sounds great. And um, it is interesting, like how we. D- I mean, sometimes like uh, there is no other way to do what we do, and I feel like we're one of the only bands that, if you see live, um, have a combination of the courage and the carelessness it takes to try out so many things. Yeah. But uh, here's the truth: if you want, like a lot of our the way we write and the way it's not really the way we write because the songs are the songs but the way we arrange and the way we let the song the song settle really has to do with trying things and you can't try things in a rehearsal space because then you're just deciding how things will go and you, you can get it tighter and tighter and tighter but when you're just playing the song beginning to end with no audience and not not in a live situation you have no idea about impact And, also you uh, don't know how it sits in your set yeah and like we have songs that, like the first couple of times we tried like Slow Fingers was really a drag to play yeah it was in the beginning it, of show it, too it, it, it was, like, it was it a bad, bad song it was a bad song and now it's like great yeah now it's fucking killer yeah it's killer beginning both parts were, were, were bad yeah and, uh, didn't you know, we switch them around too we switched like them part around one, part two. And we switched the order of part one and part two we changed the melody of part two completely yeah but uh, it didn't work before yeah we did a rework we changed the forms we're soloing on the, we keep well you harmonize now yeah I harmonize we keep uh, we keep adding uh, like you know kicks and hits and that stuff needs if it's gonna be good it needs to happen gradually although well, some stuff just We're good at knowing when stuff doesn't work, yeah because stuff when you know how to play stuff works kinda right, yeah, so it's like we played like I'm talking about specifically about the song that doesn't have a name, yeah. and we did it in a second line, groove. yeah, we and tried to do reason, like a New Orleans kind of groove, and it felt every night felt like we were a jazz combo, like yeah, in college. like it felt it didn't feel right, like and obviously, if you look at it, you'll be like, well. We still know how to play. Well, like, because you were asking about my solo, and I was like, yeah, I still know how to there, play, but this, it didn't feel correct. There's this thing that once you know how to play the right notes and the right rhythms and to keep time and to play with a nice sound where everything is fine. Like, you could, it, it doesn't matter. You can make that into a bossa nova yeah. or, or whatever or a rock and roll yeah. beat. You know, it doesn't, th- those are changes, you know, you can make them on the fly and still make everything okay, but it's, It's an issue of impact, yeah. you know, so some things just don't uh there's no synergy, like it just sounds like if it just sounds like Danny playing eighth notes on a boss and over groove in time with it's it's not enough there yeah, needs it to, to be, be an, ad- an additional yeah, it needs to have also like a specific unique. Something needs to click. That, like yeah. you just have your... Uh, But it's above, yeah, it transcends above just the technicality. It's, it's exa- it. And I think that's, that's really what it is. It's like, it's that... I, I keep thinking about that, uh, you know, the, because of something uh, Matt Walsh said, you know, it's like he's, he's talking about like, you know, art and music and he's like saying about what we're looking for is, is transcendence. And, you know, that, that just gives... Uh, it gives... Uh, It gives a word to this thing, but I feel like that's always been my attraction to improvis- improvising in jazz yeah. right it's like you it's not even that I liked solos like I never had a love for all solos yeah that's why you also don't we're not big into transcribing solos and learning them right because that's not what, that's not the point no the point is like as a listener you get to this point in the solo where you achieve takeoff yeah you know it's like it's 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 really It, there's some sort of feeling of like just rising above the music um, and like the song coming to life and it can happen you know and again you have to you just have to be sensitive to, to whether it's happening or not in your music and a lot of times you don't know right away because it's like the newness of playing on something it's exciting is exciting and it's hard to know if you're just excited or if it's actually taking off yeah you know or it's, it's like you've achieved some sort of balance with everything yeah. where where it's really working yeah. and so we have sometimes songs that are immediate obvious. you yeah. know it, and it can happen it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be like with a super inspired night of soloing like some melodies have it in them like the intro for African chapter or something it just has a certain kind of umph yeah go, going into the riff you know it just You can, you can make like some sort of, uh, like at the end of the day, all we're doing is kind of, 
it's a weird thing we're making drawings in the sand but then some of them just become kind of permanent you know you kind of memorize memorized uh the sequence of shapes and that's what you do you know and you're just always looking for that for the crystallization yeah i'm wondering about the song now if it if it's it's still not there like some things need to happen yeah it feels a little bit empty to me yeah but now there is something cool about it that at least that I didn't like that things it's things not like are, before it's like it just feels like things still need to be shaken a few times yeah it need know? to be super tight for it to work that's one of the issues I think yeah you know it's uh, maybe a busier baseline I don't know we, we don't even have a song but it happened also in uh if somebody saw us this too on uh, wet Willy which used to be called Sherry Bear yeah. yeah. today was good Yeah, today felt really good. We're doing a, th- a new thing on this one called Wet Willy, which is uh, trading. trading. And we've never done that before, which I actually feel like for the f- like, okay, we've done some trading on uh, the live Vanthrax. version of Vanthrax. No, but it's not in the album. We took it off. We took it out. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying like, I always had this um, mentality about trading, which is the way I'd still do it. If I was playing with somebody, I wanted to defeat the. In a jam session, oh like competitive, yeah, like competitive trading, but it's like you know we're in a band together, it's like <laughs> also we do the same stuff, so it's a little bit weird, yeah, I know, but it's like it's like like if you if you're trying to build a solo where you're trading eights the whole time or fours or twos, and you just kind of destroy the pacing of your solo out of getting excited, mm-hmm. and there's nowhere. For me or for you to go, it's like the song is ruined, yeah, so we gotta like I don't know, I'm just really trying to listen to like little rhythmic rhythmic things you're doing in the middle and kind of do them in the beginning, yeah, just, but I do too with your stuff, obviously, yeah, you just extract something on the fly that you can grasp and and do it yeah. uh, it's to me stuff with tone is the most what sound is the, the sound is the is the, is the best because that's kinda because it's kind of. cool thing about the saxophone guitar thing you really have to do something that pops out and is obvious like yeah. if, if it's a whole tone thing it's like, yeah like oh. you did today but and I did something similar to it right so. I did like I tapped I did like a uh, pick tapping yeah like the stuff that, yeah, yeah. The stuff that you do like that is good I, I never tapped about it. do you have like now I thought about when you played the new so the other new song uh huh If uh do 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 if there's stuff that people like Steve Vai and stuff do like tricks that they got they have tons no, but you don't do that you can actually use now, but back in the day you didn't really want to touch that kind of stuff, and now maybe you can find a way to use it and be cool. uh, I don't know yeah I, I don't know we were trying to listen to some Joe Triani in the begin in the beginning of tour uh, it's very it's very tough no I hate music I was not <laughs> did we hear today something that people said is maybe the best saxophone track it's just, uh, it's I don't understand anytime I hear Mark Turner I don't know if it was Mark Turner or Joshua Edmund because they're both on this the was track. Mark Turner I know and I know. it was the fucking pit the, the way the way like these that, that generation <laughs> of like 2000 and change like yeah. plays like the music they like and I just there's no there, there are, I can't think of many styles of music that I understand less Yeah, like, I don't get what what I don't what understand what they, what they want like what 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 what's supposed to be I don't understand it on so many levels like I don't understand why they do what they do I don't understand what I'm what I'm supposed to be getting from it that's in the band who likes it either. I don't understand why they, they're moving between the group it's like I know that if I was hired to play in that band everybody would look at me like I'm stupid yeah like why is why is he doing that like why is it and I wouldn't even know what I'm supposed to do instead of what I'm doing well you will just play the chords and yeah be like, it's like why are you playing the chords on the chart it's like it's like those are that's the only thing you that's don't the play. basis <laughs> yeah that's the basis of what you need to play you need to build on it why are you playing why are you playing in time are you gonna play the chords every chord you play around the harmony and around the time and then not play the melody <laughs> And then in the solo, you just play weird. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's bizarre. It is bizarre. So, yeah, we, another, another big, big article of news is that we just heard that uh, our friend's band, Turquoise, broke up. Oof. Oof. Yeah. They, they were a big, big operation. Yeah. Just, just evaporated. Way bigger than us. Way, way bigger than big. us. Yeah. Big, big, big. Like thousands of people. It's actually the only band that we know 
That's a very big and most successful one last. It's like, amazing. We know, we know personally. Obviously, we know a lot of bands. That are it's a, I, I don't know. It's, you know, it's uh, after, because we just talked to their guitar player. We're not going to get into the nitty yeah, gritty of their can, business cannot, yeah. uh, of, of exactly what happened there. But, you know, it was complicated. But now, like, I'm kind of with Fauci because I don't know if I can call it a COVID death or a death with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a death with COVID. it's a death with covid but it's also it's in a way i think like when you have something that's on the fritz and you just add the amount of complication and tension to it well you heard what he said right but the guy is well that's public but the guy's marriage is over right so that contributed a lot to to the demands of the band and you can't you know covid put a lot of pressure on a lot of marriages on, on, on all marriages yeah yeah Dude, just to tell people to hang out all day. Whew. Like, yeah. like, instead of like... I talked about it in one of the podcasts. I'm not going to repeat everything I have to say about it. But yeah, it's uh, it's not the healthier thing for a wife to see a husband like that. Yeah. I mean, there's... Yeah, there, there's that there's that layer to it. But there's a lot of other layers to it. But I, at this point, I mean... Well, I think for a lot of husbands, it's also not good. Because it's like a lot of people that, that we saw that were, the kids were gone... They're like, dude, what, does the fu- what the fuck does my wife do every day? I walk like an ass every day, busting my, you know, busting my asshole. And then he's like, I, she doesn't do. She just hangs out eating bonbons like, I mean, like Al Bundy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Peggy. <laughs> and like Peggy Bundy, yeah. So I think that's also happened. I think it was a lot of, uh, it put, it put like a lot of, of took a lot of mystery out. Yeah. Like it put a lot of stuff in the front of a, uh, of a, Consciousness, consciousness, which which was hidden in the back, and I think it was very unhealthy for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, there's that layer to it, but you know, seeing the amount because we went to some Facebook uh, and and like you know Instagram pages of of bands that we know, and so many of them have no upcoming shows, no upcoming tours. I mean, it's like us consider the source is playing a little a bit, a little bit, yeah. Um, it's it's weird, like small operations and very famous people can can keep going it seems like the bigger ones there's so much I don't know how much Consider Consider is very strange to me because it's one of the bands that very, we know them but they don't know the story and yeah. some stuff about it doesn't make sense to me and when stuff doesn't make sense usually there is one answer and that there is somebody backing the operation money yeah yeah um, no, it's, it's, it's incredible. Because yeah. I talked to the agent, if you remember, and we talked about how much we need to make a night, and we could never make it work. Right. And it's like, we make more a night now. It's, isn't it incredible that like every band we see, there always is a money man? Like, we just found out that like with Turquoise, there was a money man. Uh, that lo- that lent them like insane amounts. I mean, of money. Enough. maybe that's why we still s- s- stuck in here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't know. You give me a lot of money. I don't know what I would do differently. Something you'd throw it in the air. Yeah, but it's like, should I? I don't know. Maybe the maybe some some of the people that like would catch it, would, like, <laughs> give you something. It's the one thing we. Well, I mean, we could we never had money, so we never like we never had like just this like uh, unlimited cash. The most amount of money that we threw. Was three thousand bucks on relics? And, no, no twenty six hundred. Can I just make another public? Uh, do do not give your money to any of those fucking people. We took Legacy out, media we took twenty six hundred bucks from us, which is gave us nothing, nothing, nothing. And it's a, dude, it's a lot of money. I, I mean, I don't know it's if like it's we feel it. Like if I had extra twenty six hundred now, I would be I would be happier. Let's yeah. say that. Yeah, but dude, like this idea, we had this idea. We should, that, was, that was kind of like the dark side of like Adderall when we like get inspired on a, on a night was drive. Adderall? And, yeah. And, and like start coming up with ideas. And our idea was like, we never tried the front door. We never tried the legacy media. Let's try downbeat and relics. Well, you, you really want to push for it. Yeah, I <laughs> Not did. Not pointing fingers, but you really want to push for it. I did. It, I yeah. want, because I, my whole life, I, I, I thought, you know, I mean, you see people like Billy Strings, whose career is like exploded. Yeah, because we never tied it, and and they're on the cover of those things. So it's like it it was interesting to see what would happen. I didn't think it would be very successful, yeah. but not in my in my wildest dreams. I didn't imagine that it would be nothing. This lady from Downbeat 
told us we got like 60 clicks or something on a YouTube video, not even, maybe 60, for a YouTube video. And she said, it's more than twice what we usually get. Like, you guys did great. And I was like, dude, I paid you 300 bucks for 60 clicks on YouTube. And you're telling me it's great. It's like... Where do you live? It's like, <laughs> I'm yeah. coming there. <laughs> Don't... Do hey, can we talk in person? Right. Same thing with the Relics guy. Same shit. It's like, oh, you, your ads did great. Yeah, because I'm not an idiot like the other people that run ads at your place. But it's like, this is not great. Right. What's great about it? Right. Like, I got zero. You know, that's another thought I had. Sorry, can I change the subject just a little bit? Sure. I saw this lady filming us today on her phone for a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went to get you a drink. It was Mm -hmm. when I gave you a drink. I looked at the phone. She was like, and then she saw that I was in the band. But she was filming you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, filming us. I was just giving you a bill. And people came to me and told me that they somehow found me on Spotify or a friend showed them a YouTube video or somebody told them about the show. In my fucking life, nobody said, my friend showed me a stupid video he took on his phone or put it on Instagram and that's why I'm coming to the show. Like, was, why are you filming it? I don't, you don't want to watch it later. Nobody wants to watch it. You're not helping. I can still remember a time when I would go through my phone and, see, and look at pictures. But people it, took? Like that I took. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? When when pictures were a little bit new. You, like, will, you will with, with Hannah, because it's like, yeah, I go sometimes and see Alma when she was... You know, when she was I do somewhat, but like, you know, I do I do, do it with my baby. Yeah. But I never do it with anything else. I don't like, take pictures of anything else. I would... Yeah, I would never... It's not my instinct when my mind gets blown to like try to... Bring out. Also, it takes you out of the solo. That's the thing. It's like a solo. If you've ever heard a solo uh, that you liked, it's not like you can miss a few beats and come back. And come back. It's it's a it's a holistic thing. Yeah. You know the the experience of absorbing a solo happens from the beginning of it to an end. You know to the end. And like this, just this unlocking your phone, pulling up the app, pressing record, starting to record. It's like you're already out of it, you're not. You're not having fun. And for what? For nothing. For you know. I mean, it's so. It's 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 almost moot and cliche to talk about it because everybody knows because it's so prevalent in everybody's life now. But when you see people like that, it's you know what it is. It's uh, it's over. It's people being overwhelmed. I think from having an experience, they, and they, they need to take it through a phone. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just it's it's the idea. What what they are basically saying is that my my sensory input machine is broken so severely that I can't enjoy things like through my yeah, with, so without much. this lens, right? I need to. I need to experience it through a lens I can understand. I need to make it smaller. Oh, by the way, so. They came to complain to me today that we were too loud. We were not too loud. I know. And but why did they complain? Do you know? No, because oh. somebody wanted to talk in the back. No. Why? It wasn't the customers who complained. Nobody, no, nobody from they the customers take complained. Drink orders. The bartenders, because we couldn't have a bit the drink orders. But then I saw that the bartender had a, had earplugs in. <laughs> it's like motherfucker, take your earplugs out if you can hear. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. And earplugs. It's like, and it's like, I love it. Like, dude, all those people are trying to buy drinks and you're playing. Motherfucker, we're here because we're playing. That's so crazy. <laughs> Fucking earplugs and a mask. Some, yeah, they also like, have a mask. It's yeah. like Helen Keller. <laughs> Just, dude, me, people are me. so sad your fucking mask. They're taking it off. Taking it off. She would take the lady that booked us on, off, off, off. But her daughter had to have her own the entire time, turning off. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. She was also kind of... I think I'm done. Yeah, I've been done, yeah. yeah. Well, you've also been done. We've been walking everywhere with a mask. Oh, no, no, I've, I've been I've been straight up open rebellion <laughs> yeah. uh, this tour. Enough, like, enough, yeah. yeah we're I mean, a punk it, band. That's what we decided many years ago, so... Yeah, we, we've always been punk rock, but it was nice... It was actually nice to to like uh, go into these coffee places in San Diego without a mask and just watch them freak out. Everywhere. Just like... But a lot of places, even California, they mask us. Yeah. Well, there's one guy asking me yeah. if we're do you, in LA. Do you need a mask? Need a mask. <laughs> do you need a mask? Do you need one? Do you need one? I was like, sure, I'll take your mask. Yeah. Yeah. Slow. Yeah. <laughs>
No, it was one guy. Only one place who didn't put it back on. Because, like, dude, I already got my drink. It's like, I'm out. I just want to sit on the floor when they ask me. Yeah. Just be like, I'm safe. It's okay. (laughs) Yeah, and later today, she was in a wheelchair. It's like, dude, you, you, you should never wear a mask. You're basically sitting the entire time. You don't have to wear a mask when you're sitting. You're sitting. That is true. Yeah, wheelchairs really save you. But I, I was thinking, like, if you if you bring an outside drink to a place and you're drinking as you walk to the register, is that okay? If it's a sandwich, yeah. Are you not allowed? But like, if you buy the sandwich from them and then you eat it on the way, that's allowed. It's like there's so many. Uh, it's just it's really fucking annoying don't the thing that people don't understand I'm sure some people listen to it are, you know love the mask and would marry them but why like don't enforce it what I told the guy in um, in LA it was trying to annoy me because I was like dude it, it, it's stupid I, not, I already had COVID I'm yeah. no, I, it's like I just had the strain that everybody's got I had it right it's like I'm not giving you COVID relax but it's okay and it's like but but what's the rule so it's like it's time to enforce it. it's like so i told him so don't enforce it right so because nobody gives a shit it's a stupid rule made up by stupid people nobody cares it's fine we're fine it's like if you don't info if you're not gonna say any, anything nobody's gonna say anything yeah i mean it's it was it was a little bit just sitting in chicago for a while and you know, seeing it through the news was very different than being out here and seeing like just uh, you know, it's not even the like the petty dictators are. I can't stand that. Like you could see like those, especially like the ladies. Like when you get like a lady, like that's just it happened to us uh, in the hotel in L.A. Like literally, like this one housemaid, like like house clean. What do you call them? Like uh, the ones that clean the rooms. Forget. health professional <laughs> yeah so uh, administrative uh, yeah so she was the, the lady that does change, the, the room service of the girls. yeah but anyway she was just chasing me in the lobby excuse me well while well, other ladies excuse didn't me. even have a mask on because I, I was walking around and I was, and I was just pretending not to hear and just like walking away lady. but yeah but it's like you know those that that exists and that you know that's annoying but that's just a part of life but it's those people that are so clearly on the fence, like that Asian barista that was like, you know, at the coffee place in LA. Oh, the one I'm talking the about. The one you're talking yeah, about. Like, it's like, guy. dude, like, you, all you need is like to meet somebody who has the same convictions that's on the other like, side. That's I was like, I'm just so, going to push him a little bit. Yeah, it's like, dude, just, just you don't. You but don't. you see, I'm sorry, John, I'm sorry because John also writes a mask, but I'm sorry to throw you under the bus. We were in Denver. Right? And I didn't have a mask because we, we don't wear a mask in, in Wisconsin. Like We don't have to. So I just don't have one. And until we got to Denver, that was the first day that I needed one. And the guy was like screaming at me to stay out because you can't walk in without a mask. Right? Again, it doesn't matter that I fucking had it. I had COVID. Right. So it's not like I'm, uh, you can be sick and you don't know. No, I cannot. Right. I just fucking had it. Right. And John came to our table and sat down and kept the mask on the entire time. And I was like, I told Daddy, I think it's time to kill me. I think it's time to give me a stroke. Cause, and then Daddy was like, John, why are you wearing a mask? Oh, because you were out for the beginning, you know. So it's like, John was like, because I'm not drinking or eating. And it's like, this coffee shop is fucking filled with people sitting down without a mask, sipping once in a while. Yeah. But it's like, we got to follow the well, rules. Well, no, I think John, John this, this tour had a lot of... Uh, conflict because he's trying to follow the rules but the rule there are many he's a part of many circles he's a part of our circle yeah, he's, he's a part of the venue he's a part of his marriage he's a part of the town he's in he's a part of the coffee shop yeah. he's in and it's like the rules are always contradicting yeah. like for us it's just been like you know fuck it but i don't know i really do feel like i, I don't do we, have in vegas we were, we were gambling in vegas and they, they really hound you to put your mask on in the casino unless you take a step aside take your mask off and smoke in front of yeah, everybody that was so funny so you can give cancer to everybody but Can- no. COVID cancer yeah now you take off your mask to puff a cigarette and, and blow, blow the smoke out. and then yeah. put it back on it's amazing yeah yeah that's that's something that's just, something special yeah yeah no it's it's a it's really a brave new world but um yeah it, 
I, I really cannot wait for this to be over, but a part of me knows that some places... That, you know what I think? I think the places where it's already over are the places where it's over. And people listening, if you live in, like, you know, Washington, uh, D.C., or uh, in Portland, you may think that it's, that it's going on everywhere. It is not. Yeah. It's like this country... Is filled with places that are wide open. I'm, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add one thing about the lockdown. I was talking to Jennifer, to Danny's wife's cousin, mm-hmm. and just well, we talked a bunch after, but it was just the beginning, so it kind of was like a little bit kind of awkward still because she had a hard time with my accent and she, you know, doesn't really know me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, John was also talking there, and we were bringing up how I think it was in Israel or somewhere that we had lockdowns, but everybody still got Omicron and how contagious it is, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, well, then we shouldn't have had the lockdowns. It's like, and you can see she was shocked, like appalled, like how can I suggest we couldn't, we shouldn't have had the lockdowns? But I was like, but we still fucking got it. So you had the lockdowns and we got it. Yeah. So it's like, but it's like to suggest to people, what we get it twice. This is uh this is this is not the age of people with common sense. It's like common sense is really working. If you wanna if you care to understand people or the world you're living in, yeah. it's like it's really working against you at every so intersection. Shocked that I would ever suggest it, but it's so It's obvious. It's so obvious. It's like I'm trying to think about uh I'm trying to think about uh an example. It's like I it's like I throw a cup on the floor, and then it's like, why do you break the cup on the floor? Oh, because I thought there was a snake in it. <laughs> why? I don't know. Was there a snake in it? No. So you still threw it on the floor? Yes. So it's like I, it's maybe, but then it's like, oh, you shouldn't have thrown it on the floor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Something like that. I'm sorry. But I know this that, that was sucks. terrible. That was terrible matter. Yeah, I know, but it's like... I just I can't. It's so stupid that I can't explain it. Yeah, because it's so obvious. I mean, that's that's really how they're getting you right now. I mean, I f- I feel the same way. It's it's, it's not. Uh, you, it's better to not make sense of it. I feel like there's we are uh, we are at a point now where you either comply or don't comply, and I'm I'm kind of deep in my lane now. Unless I'm around my wife, then then I pretend to be on, uh, <laughs> on her lane, lane. Yeah, yeah, on her wavelength, which is okay. I can live. I can live with. It. I can live this double life. Yeah, I'm not saying that you need to go into fights like if you're in Chicago and you're like you have to go, you have to go into fights. Then I just I just gauge I just gauge uh, like what's the best outcome for me. Like I would I would certainly avoid like a marital fight. Uh, and just put it on without asking. But if I'm alone, like oh, fuck it, I'm, yeah. I'm going. The only thing I don't do, I don't put mask on my daughter, no matter what. Yeah. But it's like for me, it's like if, like when I go to Whole Foods, I don't care that 99 percent of them are masked. It's like I'm not gonna, I don't need to. I'm mm. not going to. If you say mask are recommended, then I don't care what you recommend. Don't give two shits. You know, if yeah. I'm just going for no, a second, Chicago, Chicago is so much more hostile about it. Like you know, you any it's like going to San Diego, so like every everybody yeah, so will I hound put you. it on. Yeah, yeah. Now there's there's no there's no choice about it. Yeah, I just say you know, you give me a mask, and it's like I don't have one. Give me one, and I put it on. It's so fine. After today, I'm changing the subject just a little bit. Do you, do you still think we need sound guys? People probably are sick of us talking about that shit, cause like the mask thing. Yeah. Like ah, I get politics yeah, yeah. again. Right, but, right. Yeah. But uh, that's crazy. That's politics. Yeah. After today, I, I actually feel like we don't need a sound guy anymore. Like we are just like a garage band <laughs> that just has saxophone through a guitar amp, guitar through a guitar amp, bass through a bass amp, and acoustic drums. And like, I don't know, during like our self-made sound check, because they didn't have a sound guy there, I walked out. I was like, it sounds better than 90% of PA systems. More than 90 And like the kinds of rooms we play, like unless you're playing like a theater... Like, even in a small theater, it would be better without the PA on. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yesterday we played uh, in Phoenix. And these people that are doing sound now, you know, and this was played last exit. It's a great room. I love the people there. But, you know, when a venue has their sound guy, it was a great show. Um, When a venue has their sound guy and you just get a sound check... You don't really get to sort of aesthetically align the, your beliefs, you know, like your uh, your logos, uh, and and 
and the craziest thing is that like for many sound guys now bass is not an instrument in the music that's just a layer right like in the 70s a bass was kind of like a guitar it was a low guitar if you had to visualize it it would be like a pin right like a circle yeah you know like what I mean you, it's a layer in the music that you yeah. can visualize that's moving it's a line that's moving and then bass became this physical sensation mm-hmm. that's like spread throughout the entire music like underneath it almost yeah. it's a reimagining well, it's physic- physically underneath it's exactly. they put the fucking shit under you yeah and like there are subwoofers and it's like I hate subwoofers it covers the entire mix I know but it's like that's that's the thing and John plays a lot of notes it's not like when you're listening to a, yeah. to a like it's like each note kind of has has, way. has a thing and you feel it in your wee wee which is really what they're trying to do like John's my probably boom, boom, sound boom, was boom, good boom, out, boom, I have to, I have to give, but sure, we did ask him to take it down I'm sure it was good at some point in the room where I was standing first of all if you if you put a subwoofer under your musicians you're an idiot yeah it's like but so just, many people do it yeah yeah also a whole stage in a subwoofer but when that stage is like every time there's a bass note you feel like you're on a trampoline yeah. just shooting <laughs> right. to the ceiling but yeah it's like that. I don't know I'm not into the it's there's something about magnifying the sound of a band to a place where you know you, what, what are you doing at the end of the day like you know you're, you're making things sound much bigger than they are in a small room it's like why like why are we doing why are we playing this game you know it's like you can hear everything it's also weird because like you said we don't align our beliefs so we we just the way the sound sound works with us a little bit different because we we insist but it's usually kick snare it's like how do you know to EQ on your bit EQ the kick the snare the, the symbols like, as you know well, how to do it yeah because they're saying like oh I'm, I'm really trying to get a good mix but it's like, like what, I know do, you the room. what, what do, do you mean what do you mean in the room the room has one type of right you know it makes no sense it's like they have the sound of drums well, in their they, head. they also they say they know the room it's like okay so what if I turn the amp face the ceiling good or bad it's like I never tried it so okay how about it to the floor to the side this side it's like you know you all you know is like how to get the sound that you consider to be like what, okay okay and again it's like these people are young too it's like like a lot like the sound guy yesterday I was talking to him for a second like he likes animals as leaders and and uh, Chon and bands like that yeah, and, when, and that's, why, that's why it's good that we don't give him saxophone anymore to the PA yeah but I'm saying it's like like dude like that is like the opposite of what I like in mixing yeah. you know what I mean like super clicky bass drum super aggressive guitars bass that's out of like you know so no bass in, the, in some of that music like tons of like, it's the opposite of like what I consider to be like I have a much more either like you know somewhat 70s somewhat 90s yeah. aesthetic uh, kind of like yeah kind of a mix I would say, uh, yeah. uh, not 90s fusion but like I like Rage Against the Machine yeah, like, albums like Rage Rage is like, like yeah like the, the way that the ba- and Chili Peppers, Chili Peppers too. the way that the bass and drums sit in those mixes I like and the way the guitar is kind of you know like 80s in my mind like late 80s early 90s and the way the saxophone is is like 70s yeah some so it, people it's a weird it's a weird mix of things like but I know what I like but then I hear what they're doing sometimes. Well, some people don't understand that the sax needs to be on top of the music oh yeah we used to have that we used to have to tell the sound guys every time the sax needs to be imagine the saxophone player is a singer yeah we had, we, we had to verbally tell them that yeah because they're they're just listening to it being like man this like horn section is forever long <laughs> <laughs> and it only has one person in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, no, no. Con- but again, it's it's weird. What I, all I'm trying to say is that, like, you know, what a mix is, is something that is has a lot of history. But like, you know, when you tend to work with people there, it's almost like when you're working with the very young people, it sucks. But when you're working with the old dudes, it's even worse. It's even worse, you know, because they're God knows what they're into. It's weird. I had another thought when we were playing in Sacramento. We had like this uh, band of old people playing blues before us. Yeah. And uh, I was, 
I never. I don't really watch our openers. It's not not. You know, not only because I'm I'm jaded on music. Just it's it's always like in a in before a, the show. It's before the show, time. you don't want to be you don't want to be it. You want to clear your mind. You don't yeah. want to be music. Okay. Um, but I was watching them, and their guitar player. Yeah, it was freezing out. Yeah, their guitar player was playing. It was impre. I mean, how many long notes you can hear in blues? First of all, yeah, I kept finding those, but like just so little technique. You know, and he didn't like he was still kind of a blues player. It wasn't like it didn't feel like a like he just it feel it felt like he play, he's been playing blues for thirty years, the same way. But like just so like so slow. No, you know? one of the worst. Yeah, it, it was not good. But like I was just thinking about how old guys now that are playing like are mostly rock and rollers. And yeah. it's and it's so like, even when we started, old guys were always kind of into something else, like you know they had like some jazz in their playing, even if they weren't jazz players, or they knew some folk songs, or they played some weird instrument like accordion, you know what I mean? Because so if you started in the '90s and you saw somebody like in his '70s playing, it was much before rock and roll. Oh, '60s, yeah. Yeah. You know, so the, the, it was leaning on something before before that, but now it's like all the all the geezers you see are like just these blues guy, again and again and again. Yeah, you know, and it's it's incredible. They know so little. Like they know, like I was looking at that guitar player play. It's like he really knew one chord progression. Like they just were playing blueses and stuff with like either blueses or vamps. You know, it's funny about those guys though. Mm. That. And that if we hear the radio, we're like, dude, this music is so simple. Yeah. <laughs> and they were right. Yeah, they would, they would be right. But it's it's insane. Because you would say, oh, wouldn't they be exposed to a ton of stuff? It's like, no, not necessarily. Yeah. Not if we're not going to look for it. I, I, I oh, I had this crazy thought. Oh, we should have opened with it. Go for Cause it. Because that was one of the most depressing thoughts we had. We walked in Santa Cruz um, <laughs> after drinking coffee. <laughs> And we walked to the venue, and we saw just Danny, uh, just Danny and, and I. And we saw this two or three, three young guys, kind of young, in their 20s, doing the worst pop, uh, pop and lock, how do we call it, lock and pop? Just break dancing. Like break dancing. It, like, it, it was so bad and so embarrassing. Oh, and we just played, we just walked on a song and played some Gypsy Jazz for you guys, the video that we have live. Yeah. And... I was thinking, dude, these guys are idiots. What do we think? It's like uh, 1989, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like and after we just played music for the 20s. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, do people look at what we do? Like jazz or fusion? And it's like, what the fuck? Are we, this, this retro... The sort like, of touch. Retro, like a dance, like not dance, like custom thing, what those people are doing. Like, what the fuck? At it least is. I feel like at least with break dancers, most people walking down the street have a frame of reference. Yeah, that's they know it's break dancing. <laughs> that somewhat is fresh in their mind, but they, I feel, yeah, I think for a lot of people when they when they see us, it's like maybe the like one percent of people knows exactly what we're doing. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, that's a Django Reinhardt song or whatever that weather report. I remember my Vishnu. Like you get that a little bit, but like, and then you have like. Another four percent was like they're like I love Woody Allen, you know that, yeah. and then like the next circle is like another three percent. It's like flamenco's great, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then like you get a little bit off. It's like oh, like are you guys from Lebanon? <laughs> yeah, I, and, then, and then most of them are just looking. No, I met at somebody from Palestine, but I get that a lot. Yeah, and then and then most of the people are just like, what the fuck are these? weird people do dude if somebody come to our show and I'm playing solo soprano on CD <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a, for those of you who haven't seen a live show in a while Danny now has like a like nine minute piece it's not nine minutes but it's like five nine is it nine yeah, it's, it's nine. long it's long as balls yeah it's like it's like a nine minute sa- like Eddie Van Halen style soprano like, solo soprano solo it's very funny with a lot of <laughs> yeah yeah and uh yeah, it's yeah. long it's it's weird, you know. I th- I certainly see like how people who are a fan of 
like an era of a band can easily not be a fan of the next era of a band. You know, I, th I think about that often with our music, especially like you, you get the insecurity when you write uh, new tunes. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I see like if you really got into us, it's, we have, we have kind of a few temperatures, but like if you really are into like the song is rarely jazz or, um, on the square or like, you know, the, the kind of heavy rock things, you know, we we still do some of that, but we don't do a lot of it. And really, ever it's... Yeah, but you see, to me, like, well, Beth Gamano is my wife, but she, when she met us, she loved the music, because she, like, Down Goes the Day, it was, like, her favorite song we did, mm -hmm. and Way to Riches, and Purple Fiddle, and all that stuff. And then she also was one of the only people that liked that we actually divided the songs to saxophone songs and guitar songs mm -hmm. because she's just not into that into guitar. Mm -hmm. But now that we do what we do, it's like it's really helpful to listen to a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, it happens. Yeah. But... Uh, no, yeah, but you, you can't... Uh, yeah, you can't... The subjective whims of, like, the audience is certainly something you can't shoot for, but it it is weird. Like, you, you grow... And you change, and I do feel like a lot of times, like for me, uh, I can really only speak to myself. I find myself more drawn, or only drawn, to very like primordial kinds of music, right? Like very, they, it really needs to be old. Like I, I like the sound of new things. Like I, I, maybe it will happen, but it hasn't happened in a very long time. Where I'm like. You know, I veer towards something that's like current. It's just I, I don't like that. I, I tend to not like it, and it's it's not. The it's only not only positive. Things I kind of like is stuff that's current, but we're really are doing a version of something older. Like yeah. what I played you today, that we're gonna use. You know, it's like we're gonna kind of take something from it for one of our songs. But yeah, like even like a two, like playing a two five one is something that five years ago. We wouldn't dream of doing in any context. Well, we really don't do it still. We do it in the song. The yeah, in that one song, we didn't figure out how to make it work yet. One song, and we really didn't know how to make it work. We got some things. No, it's not true. What do you mean? No, we don't. Yeah. Well, when do we play to? We have one? minor two fives now. What joke joint? Yeah. Yeah, but it was a long song. Yeah, no, that's true. It, it exists. But even, you know, the era before that, like, you know, last chapter of Dreaming, Breaking the Cycle... We were we were not we were barely touching that kind of stuff. Very, very stuff though. Barely, not much. No, but Anyways, there is. The no, I'm the, thinking. I know what you're saying. Though, the the point is that the music, like the the, the things that uh, you can't avoid influence. You know, you you end up being influenced by the stuff you're listening to. But like I I even think about one of the songs. Uh, that that one on, but we didn't do it. Yet. We didn't do it yet. But like the, I did the solo version of it in Ten Years in the Sun, mm. um, and uh, you know, I I remember when I was writing the melody, like a part of it was loosely based on uh, like just you know yeah. a little detail yeah. in like that nobody would ever figure out, uh, but like just something in the Frank Sinatra version of Here's That Rainy Day. Yeah. You know, that like gave me an idea of how to move a diminished chord, whatever. But it's inconceivable to me that like 10 years ago, that would be a go-to. You know what I mean? That I'd listen to like a Sinatra thing in our music. Like I was listening to, I was still listening to Zeppelin. You know no, what I mean? You didn't though. Ten years ago, I was still for ideas. I was listening to no. Rage Against the Machine. I was listening like whenever I would go like. I know what you're saying, but we still do. I really don't feel like we change that much. No. No, I don't. And I think that we always try to take stuff further, right? Mm -hmm. So we always try to do stuff that we don't really do. Like the song with the two fathers we're talking about now, that's an old fucking song. I wrote that it song is. forever ago. Yeah, it's like you know? six years old. Yeah, but we didn't know how to make it work. Same thing with Swamp Us. When we wrote it, mm -hmm. we just could not fucking make it work. Sometimes sometimes what I, what I really notice is that with some songs and some melodies, what you really are doing, even, th even though you're thinking that you keep rearranging it, you're just waiting for a different lineup. 
I was just about to say that from my experience just with and what I was saying about now but but from my experience the usually the issue with the song is that the rhythm section don't know how to make it work yes like we've had any any Pat Metheny style like straight straight eight kind of uh, you know those kind of like ECM-ish bit, beats like Everett is our like is our first drummer that can kind of make it work and he needs to he's work on it too it, though. It's, but, it's, it's but, but, it sa- but it felt good from moment one yes, like did. with Justin we could never get through it yeah, with Greg forever, yeah. with Greg we, we tried for a second and we were like we just gave up you know but again you know we've said it a bunch of times even on the podcast like nobody played African chapter like Greg yeah Greg that was he was so in his element yeah you know? Greg some songs play fucking great yeah, there's there there are when you needed to do like something that was just like cold and metronomic, yeah. and that was like in the spirit of the song. He was the best drummer for that that we've had. Um, but yeah, I mean, like ever, it's like really good at like being interactive. But it's, but all I'm saying is that sometimes you you know you think that there's something fucked up about the song or your ideas or your arrangement, but a lot of times like that tempo and that groove and that harmony and that melody and the way you're playing it are fine again Swamp House we tried to do Swamp House with a bunch of people couldn't let them walk and with Blake it was fine it was a great song with Blake yeah so you know it's you can't you can't tell yeah I don't know listening uh, we we listened to our own music in a night drive the other day um, or is it on day drive? I don't remember. Night drive. Night drive. After you, my yeah. my Phoenix. And um, it was uh, listening to albums that that Blake was on was interesting because if I listen deeply, like I hear all the issues, but it's amazing how like we made it work. You know, Blake has a thing to him, and I, I it's just. Yeah, he was a complete fucking idiot and he would randomize a lot of parts. But when he would play, even in the studio or like in soundtrack or something, just him alone, it's like, dude, this fucking can play, this motherfucker can play drums. <laughs> this, I still remember the one time he played that amazing song. And on, yeah, on Splow in, in North Dakota, I was like, what the fuck? It's like one of the best drum solos I've ever heard. <laughs> so weird yeah it was insane it was insane drum playing yeah it was just it was just crushing it like yeah insane it was really one of the best of the drums yeah but it's but I'm saying not even with us I'm just saying playing alone like you're like okay this guy's a fucking drummer yeah like he knows to make stuff work yeah you know and we had a lot I'm not gonna name musicians but more, a lot of musicians especially bassists it's like they would be better than him specifically, like more consistent than him, or know more stuff, or be more flexible. But they will not. They would not know how to make things sounds good. And and we played with a lot of drummers before, you know, before and after Blake. And Blake was in the band for so long. Cause, dude, I was looking. I looked in my emails. I was looking for a new drummer. Maybe seven, eight months after Blake was in the band, I already looked and talked to drummers mm-hmm. and to replace him. And it took three or four years. Yeah. And the reason was because I couldn't fucking find somebody that sounded that good. That sounded that good. Actually, I found yeah. a lot of people that technically, like, we won't crash and burn like he did, or more, but it's like you play with them, it's like, dude, this doesn't fucking sound good. Yeah. Yeah, no, people are the I mean, I'm very happy with our lineup right now. John is really improving a lot. Yeah. Like, it's. He he made some leaps. Lips. Yeah, he has this year. Year, but he made he made he, he made some serious specifically leaps. made leaps with our. He made he made I didn't things. Know if we could make it happen. I, I actually did not believe in him on the, like just playing. You see this a lot with bassists that they when they're playing bass alone, without leaning on a drummer, you can't feel the groove. And he just went to a place where you can totally feel the groove. And yeah. it's very it's it's weird because I you know yeah. He, he tried to for years. He tried to and didn't. It wasn't happening. For and years. And now happen. it's happening. So it's yeah, like, it's props. crazy. Props. It's really, it's really impressive. Yeah, and I told him that too, and he was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I just like, like, like you don't notice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like you don't notice that it was unplayable before. You just playing it cool." Yeah, I don't know. Because I did tell him like how much better it is right now. You know what I was thinking today? Mm. Well, I don't know. Should we talk about it? Mm, sure. Uh, so we're playing this song. 
so well, well we talked about what song is we doing the straight in some other was cool mm-hmm. um i thought we we got some good that's stuff together yeah what willie yeah but another song you see that it's like it didn't really work and we'll find a way to make it work yeah but the part we have a part where that's a drum and bass at the end it's a drum solo but john has been really active i actually thought it worked today it i thought it worked yesterday too mm-hmm. i thought it was working but the way john is connected like and especially today but john is connected to him like he's looking at him and kind of playing with him i was like i i'm i want to tell john to do it all the time in every song of the show but i know how, i don't know how to say it in a way that's not insulting and <laughs> not to buy him out it's you know i'm i'm probably the worst uh at at accompanying drum solos that i've ever seen Like I just don't know what I just don't it like it's not that I don't know where the one is. It's that if it's not where I think it is once, then I'm just in outer space, yes, and Me I too. can't make up the one the way John can, like John has this ability ever basis to, yeah, it's just a basis skill to just to to just ignore time and reestablish it. And I feel like it's like to really have to come back from an out of pocket experience and be like, "This is where it is now, boom, boom. and yeah. just like you lay it down, and I can't I don't because it's not confidence that you need it's uh it's conviction yeah. it's like you need to you need to like be in this place where you really feel like your decisions are like. You're, and and it's true you are like you know like you you're not gonna get away with it in the studio situation with a click but live if you don't do that and your drummer is kind of drifting away yeah, you fight. rein them in yeah you know you have to rein you them to in it. it's like for me the way I, i the way i do it is i just subdivide yeah. you know what i mean so i'm going like and then if he goes off it's then fucked it's fucked because i can't there's no place to jump in but like if you're playing just like and then it's like they they know where yeah. they just make it up like physically it's so weird it's Wait, like a different you approach you to time you didn't address what I was asking what are you asking if if don't you think the way John looks at him and they were, were connected on that part don't you feel you should fucking do the entire fucking show I don't I don't think he wants to I think he I think that's a lot of work I feel like he like I feel like John really likes to close his eyes and you know just do his thing go harder like our entire show would go harder yeah if he does it good because he's really on him though yeah and I was like dude he doesn't feel like he's that on him in other parts yeah and I was like why won't he do it and I was like I don't know how to tell him that we would have been a dick yeah Just tell him like that. Why is that a dick thing to say? Because it's acknowledging that it's not happening the rest of the time. Yeah. Well, maybe like, you know. Yeah. Say I, need, I need to go him alone, probably. It's something you need to tell him alone. Oh, you are saying it publicly now, so maybe he'll listen. He won't. Yeah. It's not, even, it's not insulting. I know, it's not. But no, it's I mean, just... I mean, yeah, well, I mean, a lot of things in music will get like 15% better. If you pay more attention, you know what I mean well sometimes uh well i was so. i I was listening today and I was only now and you guys like you looked at me like, why aren't you playing the melody? I was like that's a good question <laughs> 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 and then I had uh some in my throat, and I was like, Fuck, I can't even go up now, I have to go to the bathroom and spit, <laughs> yeah, I had some mucus in my throat, it's a new variant, <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Anyways, we should, we should probably go to sleep. It's late. Yeah. Uh, This podcast, I don't know if it was the best. It was the no, best. N- now the, I'm, uh, your I'm, rant, I'm self-aware. Your maskiness, your masky rant. Oh, not because of it. Just general. Anyways. We talked a lot about lost songs nobody knows. That's I'm okay. just thinking, yeah. We're deep on tour. Can you guys, uh, can you guys uh, comment a little bit? Yeah, comment this week like, on so, the So we YouTube. know that you're still listening to the podcast. Yeah, no, we know, we know you are, but uh, we, we see the numbers, but. still comment it's nice. nice so guys we'll see you next time check out the music blah 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 sign up for the podcast oh VIP VIP pack you know you know all the stuff go yeah. to band camp see ya <laughs>